think you have to stay optimistic to be a fisherman. We're fishing for ocean leather jacket and a bit of snapper as well. It's tough living in paradise, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Danny Green and I'm a professional fisherman from Coss Harbour. I have a deckhand Ethan Ellis. Um, we mainly trap and line fish. This time of the year we're fishing for ocean leather jacket and a bit of snapper as well. We normally start early in the morning around 4 o'clock, 4.30 just depending on what we're planning to do for the day. Well we usually come down to the harbour, get ice, bait, make sure all the boats in good working order. Hopefully we have, have a good day, but we'll have to wait and see. I've always wanted to be a professional fisherman. Um, I was interested in it at a very young age and I um, had the opportunity to work on a lot of commercial boats while I was at school. Not to get paid, but just going out just because I loved it. I actually did my work experience in Year 10 on the boat that I ended up buying later on, so that was great. So this is where our first trap is. It's about nine and a half miles from where we are at the moment, so I'm just putting a mark on it, and then that'll give us the line that we have to follow to meet up with that trap in about an hour and a half's time. So that's a GPS. How important is that in fishing oh, today? This is this is critical. Back in the old days, they used to go off landmarks, compass bearing, and hours travelling, which made it very hard to hit a little spot out in the middle of the ocean. The mornings are always nice, a bit of excitement in the air. You're not quite sure what you're, what you're going to catch for the day or what the day is going to bring. It doesn't look like there's a lot of tide there, so we'll have to see what we end up with. Looks like there's a couple of fish in it. A couple of small snapper. Not many leather jacket, but um, we'll have to see what the next trap's got, I think. These traps are in fairly deep water. We're about 46 fathoms at the moment. We have traps that are deeper. We trap out to about 60, 65 fathoms. What's um, that in metres? Uh, for about 90 metres and 120 metres. You're measuring there for size? Size limits, yeah. Snapper size is 30 centimetres. And there's no size on ocean leather jacket. These are quite a small jacket. We usually want to get them a bit bigger than this. But um, I don't think that tide's helped very much. These things are like piranhas. They feed very voraciously. These were baited up yesterday with about 15 kilos of bait. And you can see for not many fish, they've eaten it out. Snapper, where the money is. Uh, leather jacket, you usually get the volumes, but not the price per kilo. I'm, I'm happy to see this amount of snapper um, in the trap. This here, this is the male leather jacket, the grey ones. Um, we primarily just take the head off these and keep its fillet. Back stake there, I'll show you that in a minute. But these are the females, the yellowy goldy colour, and we'll always keep the eggs off these. Sell them, but I'll, I'll show you it's here. Just do in behind the spine and one quick cut. And you can, that exposes that. So that's its tail. Keep that. And his eggs are there. Keep its eggs, and we don't generally keep the heads. Yeah, these fish they don't have scales. It's just mainly a leather jacket. But the easiest fish in the ocean to skin and prepare, really. Don't mind them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Eh? I've always been into my fishing and that, like growing up fishing, and you know I love it as a job. Big days and that, but very rewarding when we get a lot of a lot of product. 
I'm originally from New Zealand, from a small town called Gore, New Zealand, and um, I first moved over here when I was 17, to dub, uh, Western Australia, ended up here, and it's quite hard to find work around the Coffs area, but then he was looking for a deckhand out on the boat and giving me a chance, and that was last season, so must be doing something right if I'm still here. <laughs> Got a few pilchards, a bit of liver. Uh, we got some chicken carcasses. No, the leather jackets aren't real fussy. But with a bit of pillies and liver, you, as you can see, we'll get a few, few snapper as well. Bit of a messy job, but it's fun. Ready? Righto. On the 46 here, we got a really big reef line running north-south. And I'll set it just off the edge of the reef as the reef drops off onto the sand. And um, hopefully get some fish. It's definitely a gamble. You come out here thinking you're gonna get fish and you'll get nothing. You come out thinking you're gonna get nothing and you'll get fish, so it's good fun. It's early days yet today. Early days, yeah. I'm still optimistic. I think you have to stay optimistic to be a fisherman. It's um, exciting pulling up a trap, not knowing what's in it until it gets to the surface. Yeah, there's a bit better class in these fish, so. Um, New spot this, I only found this a couple of days ago. Pretty happy with it. It's a nice one, I reckon about two and a half, two and a half kilos. Nice red. Uh, the snapper's worth about three times what the jacket's worth per kilo. So on an average we get about ten dollars a kilo back to the boat over over 12 months. Are you making an okay living? Um, it's a bit hard to tell sometimes, but yeah, I, I think we're, we're getting by okay. Um, touch wood that we'd have no major breakdowns or anything like that. In Coffs Harbour, apparently there used to be about 15 to 20 trap fishers working out of the harbour itself. Now there's only a couple of us left. I think it's got a little bit to do with the, with the reforms, but also higher fuel prices, higher bait costs. Um, the overheads for trapping is, is a lot more expensive than a lot of the other fisheries as like line fishing or something like that. I feel like the professional fishers get a bad rap sometimes, maybe through the general public not fully understanding what it is that we actually do. Most of the fishers are like a watermen, they love the ocean, they love the environment and that's why they start fishing in the first place. We started off hoping to get a few more leather jacket, but um, we ended up catching a good, good feed of snapper, fortunately. So it ended up being a quite a good day. G'day fella, how'd you go? Yeah, they're not too bad, mate. A few snappers, a couple of jackets. Oh, nice, a bit of row. Lovely. Good, row. good time of the year for the jackets, eh? Hey? Yeah, we'll have a little squeeze and see what they look like under there. Oh. Beautiful, absolutely perfect. Danny's the, one of our youngest fishermen in the whole fleet. Does a great job. We're going to keep the industry going in the future. You know, we need to have that fresh blood coming through. They'll be in the shop at about nine o'clock tomorrow morning. These guys. Yep, XLs. We keep all of those. We'll cut like these into barbecue steaks. Yeah, they'll be out in the front window first thing in the morning. So, beautiful product. Absolutely beautiful. So we'll use the heads, we we'll use the tails. Uh, the only parts of the fish that will really go to waste, and even then it's not at waste, it goes back out for baits, the gill and the gut cavity. So we're using up to about 95% of the fish there, especially on a large one like that. Uh, good product this time of the year, absolutely amazing. Once that's set, that hasn't even got rigor mortis yet, but once that's set, you can pretty much just slice that and eat it straight away. You don't even have to cook it. That's, that's the quality of the fish.
other parts of the world, they aren't allowed to eat fish straight out of the water. They have to actually freeze it first before they can consume it. We don't have that problem here. We should be celebrating that, personally, I believe. It's tough living in paradise, I'll tell you what. <laughs>